Back in February in the current year, I made a video called Britain's Road to Totalitarianism and then doubled down on it exactly one month later showing the persecution of pupils in schools for daring to lean towards political positions that are not in line with the extreme leftist consensus of the civil service and the general, general and generalized establishment. Well, it turns out that Brexit only mildly derailed the totalitarian project and the place continues to sleepwalk into Airstrip 1. Let's explore! Hello everyone and welcome to the Freedom Alternative. Now I rarely do make videos on Britain because, well, because English is universal enough and most people find out and comment on the news faster than I do. But nevertheless, sometimes something so outrageous comes out from there that one needs to talk about it. So. Two stories from you, one from the Totalitarian Legislation Department and one from the Totalitarian Practice Department. Let's start with legislation. Coming from ZDNet.com, Britain has passed the most extreme surveillance law ever passed in a democracy. And goes like this, quote, The UK has just passed a massive expansion in surveillance powers which critics have called terrifying and dangerous. The new law, dubbed the Snoopers Charter, was introduced by then Home Secretary Theresa May in 2012 and took two attempts to get passed into law following breakdowns in the previous coalition government. Four years and the general election later, May is now Prime Minister. The bill was finalized and passed on Wednesday by both parliamentary houses. But civil liberties groups have long criticized the bill, with some arguing that the law will let the United Kingdom government document everything we do online. It is no wonder, because it basically does. The law will force internet providers to record every internet customer's top-level web history in real time for up to a year, which can be accessed by numerous government departments, force companies to decrypt data on demand, though the government has never been that clear on exactly how it forces foreign firms to do that, and even disclose any security features in products before they launch. Now, absolutely brilliant, Britain. Open up our private security to the almighty Big Brother before we even deploy it to our customers. Now, I'm sorry, uh, wasn't the state supposed to, uh, you know, save the people and not the other way around? Oh, just asking. Anyway, back to the article. Not only that, the law also gives the intelligence agencies the power to hack into computers and devices of citizens, known as equipment interference, although some protected professions, such as journalists and medical staff, are layered with marginally better protections. In other words, it's the most extreme surveillance law ever passed in a democracy, according to Jim Killock, director of the Open Rights Group. Skipping a bit. There are some safeguards, however, such as a double lock system so that the Secretary of State and an independent judicial commissioner must agree on a decision to carry out such warrants, though one member of the House of Lords disputed that claim. A new investigatory powers commissioner will also oversee the use of these powers. Despite the uproar, the government's opposition failed to scrutinize any significant amendments and abstained from the final vote. Kellogg said recently that the opposition Labour Party spent its time simply failing to hold the government to account. But the government has downplayed much of the controversy surrounding the bill. The government has consistently argued that the bill isn't drastically new, but instead reworks the old and outdated Regulation of Investigatory Powers Act, and this was brought into law in 2000 to quote-unquote legitimize new powers that were conducted or ruled on in secret, like collecting data in bulk and hacking into networks, which was revealed during the Edward Snowden affair. 
Much of those activities were only possible thanks to litigation by one advocacy group, Privacy International, which helped push these secret practices into the public domain while forcing the government to scramble to explain why these practices were legal. The law will be ratified by royal assent in the coming weeks. So yeah, uh, now the GCHQ and PRISM is legal because royal assent. Now I gotta give it to the establishmentarian cucks who brought this. I mean, they introduced one of the, they produced one of the finest fuck you to their own people in recent history. I mean, look, about, look, look at it this way. At least the Americans simulated a vigorous debate over the Patriot Act, and they also have limits on it. I mean, for instance, the damn thing keeps on expiring, so the establishment has to keep on defending the status quo, thus keeping, a little bit at least, their feet on the fire. In France, the powers that be had to defend their infringements for years and eventually lost some of them at the Supreme Court. In my country, the same thing, the powers that be lashed out on everyone when the Supreme Court deemed many of its practices unconstitutional. But in Britain, well, the second they were exposed, they simply ran to the Parliament, which served largely as a Supreme Soviet, merely rubber stamping the decision of the Politburo, and legitimized the highly immoral and illiberal practices of the state. Way to go, Britain! the oldest parliamentary democracy and a model for the world. <laughs> yeah, right. The only other place in Europe where such overt contempt for the citizens' basic freedoms is normative is, well, Germany. You know, the place where you get raided for un-PC opinions, just like in Britain. In the world, shining beacons of liberty compete with Britain. The Islamic Republic of Iran, the People's Republic of China, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, and now, more recently, the Turkish Republic under Erdogan. Nice times ahead, indeed. Now, moving forward from the totalitarian legislation, let's go to the practice, where freedom of speech has long been a dangerous business in Britain, particularly for dangerous faggots. Coming from the Telegraph, Donald Trump supporter Milo Yiannopoulos barred from speaking at former school after government intervened. And it goes like this, quote, One of Donald Trump's most provocative supporters has been barred from speaking at his former grammar school in the United Kingdom after the government's counter-extremism unit intervened. Milo Yiannopoulos, a 32-year-old British journalist who has become the face of America's alt-right movement, was due to speak at the Simon Langton Grammar School for Boys in Canterbury. However, James Soderholm, uh, the school's director of humanities, disclosed that the event had been cancelled after the Department for Education raised concerns about security and potential reputational issues. He accused the government of casting doubt on both the pastoral care and intellectual preparation we offer to our students, and said that the school will resist censorship and remain committed to the principle of free speech and open debate. But not for the dangerous faggot, I guess. Mr. Yiannopoulos accused Theresa May, the Prime Minister, of being a total fascist and accused her of deploying sinister counter-extremist goons to bar him from speaking. A journalist for the US right-wing website Breitbart, Mr. Yiannopoulos has gained celebrity status amongst Trump's supporters for his aggressive and deliberately offensive sense of humor. Skipping a bit. Since being banned from Twitter, Mr. Yiannopoulos, who is gay, has embarked on a series of lectures in, at universities in US named the Dangerous Faggot Tour. During an address to students at DePaul University in Chicago, black protesters stormed the stage and grabbed the microphone over his attacks on the Black Lives Matter movement. The university's president issued an apology and subsequently stepped down. Mr. Yiannopoulos was invited to speak at his former school, from which he was expelled by Professor Soderholm. A total of 220 sixth formers had signed up for the event with the consent of their parents. But on Friday, the Department for Education's Counter-Extremism Task Force contacted the, contacted the school after receiving a complaint from 
a member of the public that's concerned trolling at its finest. While the unit has no power to ban speakers, it raised concerns about security surrounding the event as well as the potential of long-term damage to the school's reputation. The event was subsequently cancelled. Professor Solderholm said the staff and students of the school were overwhelmingly in favor. While disappointed that both the pastoral care and the intellectual preparation we offer to our students has been called into question, we at the Langton remain committed to the principle of free speech and open debate and will resist, where possible, all forms of censorship. Mr. Yanopoulos, who previously worked for Telegraph Media Group, claimed that the school had been bullied into cancelling his talk. Who knew if uh, the DOE had a counter-extremism unit, he asked on Facebook, and that it wasn't set up to combat terrorism but rather to punish gays with the wrong opinions. Perhaps if I had called my speech Muslims are awesome, they would have left us alone. Disgusted. He later told the Sun newspaper, quote, So everybody's worst fears that Theresa May is a total fascist have been confirmed by her sinister counter-extremist goons. Perhaps they should spend a little more time stopping jihadis brainwashing British school kids and less time persecuting gays they disagree with. Roger Gorch, uh, Kent County Council's counselor for education, said that the cancellation was up to the school, but said that those with unsavory views should be challenged. He said, direct sunlight is sometimes the best dis disinfectant. I've met uh, some of the students and uh, they are very bright and capable young people. I'm sure Yanopoulos would not be in for an easy night. A spokeswoman for the Department for Education said, quote, When concerns are raised by members of the public following media coverage in advance of an event, the department would contact the school as a matter of routine to check uh, they had considered any potential issues. The decision to cancel the event was a matter for the school. Mr. Yanopoulos speaks frequently at universities and was given a hero's welcome at the University of California, Santa Barbara, in May. Seated on a throne, he was carried to the stage by a group of men wearing caps bearing Trump's Make America Great Again slogan. So there you have it. The government's counter-extremism unit is busy on what the dangerous faggot might say, but never, ever, absolutely never concerned with what really dangerous ideologues, that will be the imams, routinely say in the countless madrasas that exist all over the country. The Department for Education simply doesn't have the time for that. <clears throat> Now, many have said that the Conservative Party is routinely failing to be, well, conservative. But it's even worse than that. The civil service, those that actually run the country, have been so subverted, so far to the left, that it might take a legit revolution to change that. And I'm not sure that can be done, at least not yet. Anyway, that's all I had to say. Talk to you all soon.